Today we're talking about creating form when you have a real cluttered photograph by using uh, simplified shape, simplified value, and then color temperature to separate the clutter. And the subject will be a, a stone bridge, trees and water, so we'll also touch on the idea of suggesting them without being over detailed. Now today we're going to talk about shape, value, and color to create more form in our painting. Because a lot of times we'll have photographs like this one that are just very cluttered. My focal point here is the bridge. I mean, that's what I liked, the way the light was hitting on the side. The bridge itself is in shadow. And the dappled light on the water and the darker trees. That's kind of my focal area. And what I want to be able to do is solidify everything else. These trees in the background become just a jumbled mess of green. The lights are too washed out in here. There's no color in them. The camera picked up good light in the shadow, but did not pick up good light in the light areas. All the lights are a bit too chalky, too white. I need to create some shape in here. And we've talked before about layering trees. And by that, I mean, instead of just a jumbled flat mess of green, I want to create kind of layer. So I have the foreground layer here and in here. That's the foreground. Then maybe a middle ground. There's not always a correct version. It's whatever you use value-wise and temperature-wise to make things go back or come forward. So here I have the foreground shapes, the middle ground shapes, and then the background shapes, number three. So I have three layers of trees there. And I want to be able to simplify that, to create more of some depth and shape in there where in the photograph there isn't any. In the foreground trees, I'm going to separate them by increasing the vertical shape of the trees, get more darks. The light's coming in front. It's backlit, but it's also coming a little bit from the side. So I want to remember that and create maybe dark values that make the trees stand up more, or the trees. Put the lights on the side where the sun's coming from, but emphasize where the light is. It's in front. So I don't want too many of these little lights here in front. You know, I can have some, but my goal is to interpret what I see and create a sense of light by using more simple shape, values that set up the light direction, and then temperature, color temperature, that makes the groups of trees recede or come forward. So in doing that, I created, again, more upright vertical shapes here. Upright vertical, upright vertical, because they're darker now. They read more solid, because I have definite darks that make the light look like it's in front instead of maybe behind me, which always, for me, means simplify more than what's there. Because my painting has to show where the light's coming from when it's due into the form. And if I don't simplify it and push the idea, the values and the shapes and the color temperature to show that, it's not going to work as well. So I pushed the foreground trees. I made this a little more of a fall. This was taken in August in Kansas, the Kansas Flint Hills. But I went ahead and pushed it more towards late September, October. So I warmed up these more of a yellow, yellow, orange, green in here, a little bit lighter. The shadows are here lighter. Here it's more of a fall tree. And I've set up the darks and lights to show more so than the photograph where the light's coming from. You can see the changes there. Just emphasizing that shadow pattern more, making the shape a lot more simple. Same thing on the left side, that lighter green tree. Now it has more shape because I've got it a lighter shadow against a darker background. So here that foreground tree disappears, here it comes, sticks out. And there's more depth because the background layer I made just a simple muted blue. Could make it a blue-green, but by pushing it more of a muted blue, it's going to stay back there. I got rid of a lot of the sky holes because there's just too many. So by simplifying, emphasizing the value to make the tree as a stand-up plane, vertical plane, and then using cooler, warmer temperatures to make it come forward or go back. All that simplifying, not copying, but more interpretation, is going to create more depth, separate the trees into layers, 
that reads better in the painting. Also the idea that I need to crop. All these pictures I'm gonna show, I need to crop. So here, I do like the trees quite a bit. So I'm gonna have more of the trees showing, less of the foreground. I like the background in the sky. I'm gonna be cropping more of the bottom. So it's more of a horizontal to get in the shapes of those trees. Bridge is a bit over to the left, balanced by this big tree on the right and the dappled light and dark kind of breaks up the foreground. But it's real important to get that darker, cooler value of the trees in the background, allowing these lighter colors of these fall leaves to stand out, dark and light, against the darker, cooler background. Now, moving on to some other photographs, we want to do the same thing here. If I find a layering here of trees, this can be foreground, maybe middle ground, and then background and then one more layer of background. So four layers here. And I wanna separate it by value. I want these darks to stand up more. So I will simplify the darks. So again, pulling that together, I want an overall shape that works. Nothing that's too symmetrical or even or too order looking, you know, it's the nature. So I'm getting rid of a lot of the light. I want that the sun is coming again from in front but not very far in front. It's, this is about two o'clock. This is in New Mexico. So the sun's pretty much overhead, about two, 2.30. So the lights are gonna be following in there. And I'm just picking any light color. It's a little too light and garish, but you can see where I change the shape of the lights and darks to fit more of where the light's coming from. So I'm trying to emphasize the shape more with where the lights are, where, where, where the sun is, where the light source is. Same thing back in here, I would gradually, you know, I'll have darker accents in here that are real dark, but then the dark accents will get a little bit lighter back in here. And I might get a little bit more of a bluish in here. Then as I go back, get a little bit cooler, slightly lighter, and then in the background here, just a lot lighter. So again, layers of shapes going back. And all these, don't forget, you have to crop. And you decide whether it's more of a horizontal shape. If I want, if I'm really interested in these trees going this way, then I'm gonna make it a kind of a longer rectangular, kind of a horizontal rectangular. If I'm interested in more of the creek or the sky, it's gonna be probably more vertical. And if I want a little bit of both, I'll make a square. So don't hesitate to paint on those shapes. Don't find a good square shape and then paint a rectangle, a long horizontal rectangle. Same thing here. This is probably more of a square because square or vertical. I mean, it could be a kind of a squarish rectangle, nine by 12, eight, 10 by 12, but definitely not a long horizontal because there's a lot of extra stuff on the sides. The focal point is more right in this area with my center of interest either being here or here. But all these need to reshape the trees. Again, more of those vertical darks, less of the little tiny sky holes and background showing through. And forcing more temperature. I would really get a lot cooler back in here. So the more I can get this just to stay back there and get rid of the detail, the more these trees are gonna stand out and look more sunlit. The background is in, has some sunlight in it, but it also has a lot of shadow. So just to push it slightly darker and cooler allows these trees to stand out. Then I can work on the vertical shape of the darks and the lights following the shape of the trees to make it work better. Same thing here, I have the foreground trees. These are aspen. So if I wanted to, I'm not really going fall here. It's close to fall, but I can push some of the foreground trees here. Maybe the background are uh, more of the pine trees. And again, a value and a temperature and color that makes the yellow trees stand out more. Now there are some lighter values in here and I could go with those, but I don't want them as light as that. At least in my interpretation here, I want these to pop out more. So I'm going more with lights and darks that stay in the background. And I'm seeing these as big solid shapes, not individual little details. I can come back with darker darks, but I would probably have my darkest darks around in here, around the focal point. But 
you know, simplify and then using some cooler, slightly more muted greens, just some background back in here to make that go back. So I'm using the temperature to make that recede more. And um, so that's what we're trying to do, create more shape by simplifying the shapes and value, or create more form by simplifying the shapes and values and using temperature to make things recede. And these are photographs that, again, that are more cluttered. If we take a look at a couple of paintings here, these are both by um, Hanson Putoff early California Impressionist. And you can see he creates these shapes here and some depth by simplifying the vertical darks and having the lights kind of follow the form on the top. And it just gets rid of the clutter, keeps things easier to see for the viewer, and simplifies it. And of course, the, the value and temperature change, things getting lighter and bluer as they recede, is really helpful. Really makes that have a lot of distance. But the key is to simplify and eliminate, and that's what he's done here. This is also a handsome put off, and you can see at the layers, it's got the foreground layer. It's got kind of a middle ground layer. These are middle ground. And then a background, and an extreme background back in there. So he really sets up layers there pretty well. And then the foreground simplified just to pull the eye in and lead you through there. So create more shape and, and more mass and more depth by simplifying shapes so the viewer can really sense the direction of light and simplify the values, to, again, to make the trees upright. And you're using value changes to create more depth and this is all more than what you see in the photograph. You have to push that idea of simplifying shape, value changes, and temperature changes. And the temperature makes the trees or shapes or mountains or whatever it is that's receding back stay back in the background.